Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Walker from denwalker.com. Welcome back again to the channel. Uh, it is Saturday, July the 9th, and I want to give an update on just sort of a, a couple of things. Um, to start, uh, just as a reminder, the BA5 and 4.5, I should say, is uh, is increasing um, globally. Um, and, and, and what you'll find, um, I suspect you'll find at least, um, is that it is going to be more prevalent, I suspect, in countries that has the highest number of jabs. For example, Portugal, for example, very high jab rate and um, and the BA4-5 is, is crushing their system currently. Uh, not so much, for example, though in South Africa, where only about 25% of those folks have been given uh, given the jab. So they're, they're doing a whole lot better. In fact, the BA5 is not uh, as far as I know, isn't doing a whole lot of damage to those folks. Um, lots of natural immunity uh, in 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 those areas. Um, so j just as again as a, as a wrap up, I, I discussed before um, the fact that um, when we first had uh, COVID, SARS-CoV one, I should say, in two thousand two ish thereabouts, they, they, there was a um, a vaccine at that time. Uh, that was intended to take care of things. Uh, and they gave it to the shot to ferrets. And um, and to their credit, uh, in one article, you'd see that it said all the ferrets died. but And they did technically all die, but about half of them died. And then the scientists went through and they uh, killed the second half just to see where the complications were. In, in, in other words, what was actually causing these ferrets to die. And so what they found was that um, when the ferrets who were injected um, were exposed to the wild type uh, virus, they didn't do so well. They, many of them died, about, again, about half of them died and the other half was done autopsy style and just to see where, where things are happening. And so now we have now 2022 we have the BA5 sort of again doing its thing um lots of complications again in areas that are highly jabbed and um I, I suspect this may be a part of what we're what we're talking about so people who've had um been jabbed one two three four times I suspect and and, and again um not that there are any overall proof to this uh, but just look at countries that has had a high, high jab rate and see what happens with them short term and long term. And the reason I want to talk about that is how the system, how your body works. Now, um, when you have an infection and any infection you've had, you know, flu before or cold before or you have really any injury, right? Your body has to go through the process of repairing that fixing that. Sometimes there are antibodies that's being created and developed and so forth. So when when that happens, your body shuts the entire thing down as, as best as it can. So you may feel sleepy, you may have a fever, you may be in bed for a couple of days, maybe coughing. All of those things happen just so that your body has the uh, needed um, materials to take care of the infection that you're currently dealing with. That's how it works. So they're typically for antibodies, they're mRNA sort of the cytoplasm and it creates this pro protein and the protein then is attached to the cell surface and the surface, surface then will uh, recognize that and create antibodies against that. Now, when the um, body is done creating a protein for the offending agent, and again, mRNA by default is pretty toxic to the cell and so it gets rid of it as quickly as it can, sometimes within a couple hours. So it does its job, it then gets rid of it naturally, breaks it back down to the amino acids, and then that's 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 it. Now, my contention from the beginning was what now happens to um, a particle that's inside of a nanoparticle, uh, which is allegedly made of plastic or or metals. Now, once it gets in, it, it's, it's, it tricks the system, the nanoparticles, that it's a part of the lipid bilayer, bilayer of the cell. So it attaches somehow to that and releases this particle, mRNA strand, into the cytoplasm, and then it supposedly, supposedly dissolves. Now, it's not uh, the typical process by the body, which body dissolves itself, dissolves things in itself, because 
it's not natural to your system. So in other words, this, the body doesn't create metallic parts or metallic parts or plastic parts. It does not do that. So it doesn't get rid of it from how they imply that it gets rid of uh, the typical process. So what happened to that? That was one of my, one of my questions. And then the mRNA strand that's being created also, um, it's, a, it's a genetically modified product. How does the body get rid of that as well? And again, it's alleged that it dissolves the mRNA strand like it would anything else. And perhaps it happens that way, but not as far as I understand. What I do read, what I do understand is that, that once that mRNA strand is actually in the cytoplasm now, it goes through the process still like the body typically would, creates a protein to then get lodged in the surface of the cell to then create the antibody. Um, but like your body, that then says in a couple hours that the protein that's needed to um, create this response, once the pro product has been created, um, your body would stop or turn off that mRNA by dissolving it. Now, this system, from what I understand, and I've read this multiple times, some things will say that that strand continues to function four months, six months, I've seen up to a year. So what it's doing really is, and, and Bill Gates said this uh, jokingly once, it's like your body have having its own little uh, uh, factory to create antibodies, which is which is true, right? Your body will continue to churn out the proteins that it needs to create antibodies that it need that it think it needs to defend itself, because that strand, that mRNA strand, is still available, still there for uh, it to do its job. So until it's dissolved, until it's gone, and again, I said before, mRNA is toxic to the system, so the body turns its own system off once the protein has been created. This other material, though, it doesn't turn it off so easily. It doesn't turn it off so well. It takes a little, it takes a long time, again, upwards of a year sometimes, to turn it off. So it continues to create antibodies. So people will say sometimes, oh, I've had my last jab four months ago, three months ago, but my antibody levels are going up. Well, that's why your antibody levels are going up because that strand is still in the cytoplasm creating creating more proteins to create more antibodies. That's simply what happens. I say that to say this. When your body is having a problem and it's creating its defense, I said a second ago that it's going to be debilitated somehow. It's going to be under the weather. You're going to feel ill and sick. And so they tell you that, yes, you'll get a fever a couple, first couple of days. You may feel uh, flu-like symptoms. You may get pain in that uh, in, in an injection site. All that is is absolutely true. You get all of those uh, all of those things. The, the, the problem, though, is that if your body is creating a defense against anything, and it's under the weather for any time, um, you're not going to do so well. You're not feeling well, obviously. Um, and it, you're not feeling well because it's it's doing its job. It's creating antibodies and protecting itself and defending itself against this offending agent. The problem, though, is if your system, which has a finite amount of uh, materials to make the things it needs to defend itself, if it's constantly ma making uh, proteins to defend against something, an offending agent that was designed in 2019, it's making antibodies, yes. Antibodies are going up, levels are going up, yes. But again, it's for a antibodies for a material that it recognized back in 2019, 2020, not for BA5, right? And again, I've, I've, I've alluded to the fact that if you had a flu shot uh, designed in 2018, 2019 flu season, taking it now would give you almost zero defense. But again, the problem is if your body is creating these proteins and you get your first jab, proteins, second jab, proteins, third jab, protein. If it's constantly producing or constantly working to make this antibodies, if something else happened to your system, you run the risk of having a poor outcome. In other words, 
if your body is already fighting, let's say a pneumonia, you feel unwell, you may have a fever, you may be coughing, uh, you're in bed for a couple of days, that's happening because your body is creating antibodies against this offending agent. And yes, the process by which the natural immunity is created, it's slow, it's time consuming, it takes seven to 10 days, sometimes 14 days to get the needed antibodies it need to defend against this, whatever you're fighting, the pneumonia in, in, in this case, that's what it does. When it does though, have the defense uh, uh, maximized, you will have antibodies against the entire part of the bug that it's fighting. So in, 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 in COVID-19, for example, it's not just that the body's gonna create antibodies against the spike, it's gonna create antibodies against the nuclear protein, the capsule, the spike, everything. That's why it's so slow uh, in, in doing so. But when it does that, when it does get to the end of it, the material it has, the antibodies it has, um, it's, it's very, very good. But again, if your body is fighting this pneumonia and it's creating antibodies against this, and God forbid then you get a foot infection, let's say, you're, let's say you're diabetic and you get a foot infection, you get osteo now. Now you have the body trying to create antibodies against two different things, two different organisms. Again, in that scenario, you may not do so well, right? So if you have just the infection by itself, lung infection by itself, it you, you'll be down for a couple of five, six days, but then your body will create a defense against whatever this thing is in about seven, 10 days, you're doing better, you're up and out again in, 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 in a week and a week and a half, and, and you're done, you're fine, right? If though, you were to get the body forced now to have, to defend against two different things, two different organisms, two different infections, then you will not do so well. And I say that because if your body's constantly churning out proteins, create antibodies against a bug from 2019, most of its defenses are in that direction or in that uh, in that vein. So if something new were to come in, let's say a more virulent strain and, and, and BA5 is more virulent uh, than the prior one, now you have two different things that it's fighting because now it's creating antibodies against the, uh, the, the initial one in 2019. Now you have a different, it's not the same, it's not the same organism. This is a second organism. So you can imagine that if you've had one, two, three, four jabs and your one, your last one's most recent jab and your body's creating antibodies against that um, and something new were to happen, you may not do so well. My caution, my, my sincere caution would be, would be this. Um, and, and again, this is just, this is just Dr. Walker saying what I, what I would do and in, in, in my suggestion to my family. If you've had your prior jabs, uh, usually most things will tell you that in four weeks, six weeks, the machinery of creating proteins uh, are reduced. I'm sorry, months, four months, six months, they're, they're reduced. So in about six months, for the most part, the body's defense system should be regulated should be back to being to being regular now your risk of catching covid as those folks will tell you um in six months is probably the same as a person who's not been jabbed i don't say vaccinated just jabbed right it's the, it's the same risk the difference would be for example in my case where i have antibodies against covid19 um if and when my body sees the ba5 i suspect from what i read again that almost 90% of us will have zero problems with with it, right? You may get a little cough and like having a, a second cold of the year, a second flu of the year. It, 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 it shouldn't be as bad as the first as the first time because your defense system um, has been quelled, has been quieted. It created antibodies months ago, likely. Uh, so it's not creating antibodies now. So my system, my immune system should not be suppressed. And, and again, I use the word suppressed because if you're currently... Uh, creating antibodies against jab number four, you may not have the same defense mechanism as someone who was, has natural antibodies for the last several months and then get exposed 
to this new variant BA5. Um, it, 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 the individual who's had exposure before, natural exposure before, natural immunity now, I suspect would do a whole lot better than someone who was creating antibodies for a virus that your body saw back in 2019, 2020. That's the the both what I what I wanted to say, um, and and most of us again, I would suggest that some of the things, and again, this was me telling you what I would do in this scenario. Again, BA five is 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 it's, it's easier to catch more people being hospitalized for it. And I think they're being hospitalized for it because the defense system is down, the immune system is down. Um, there are things that I've discussed before: quercetin, zinc vitamin C, vitamin D, and just a plethora of other things that can help you. And it doesn't mean that you must take all of those things, but my mainstay would be Kirsten zinc, vitamin C, um, and vitamin D, the, the, the mainstay, right? So if you had your second job already and it's been six months, eight months, and you want to think about this process, then, then you should. So in other words, once your body has, is, is done making those weird proteins, uh, you have sort of a sort of a clean slate or a clean plate, if you would, then use that time to help your system become maximized so that when when a viral particle is introduced to your body, your zinc levels are high enough, your vitamin D levels are high enough. And again, the a, the BA5 apparently attacks lower in your lung attacks those same receptors as before though, right? It, the, the ACE2 receptors. And what it does, very clever, it involutes those, involutes those receptors. Vitamin D, and it also creates um, increased cytokine burden in your system, which is why a lot of folks will die from like a pneumonia. Um, but vitamin D is alleged to uh, correct those inverted receptors or it prevents the receptors from being damaged by COVID. Um, and in and, and, and several things I posted in the past, you will see that um, 80% in some study that says that if you're hospitalized with COVID, your vitamin D levels are low, severely low. And very unlikely, though, if you have normal vitamin D levels, that you're hospitalized, hospitalized with COVID. So that's my, that's my ask. My ask would be that if you've already had um, your second jab and it's been a couple of six months or so and essentially starting from a clean slate. I, I, I don't know yet how to address the issue of the particles, the plastic particles or the metallic particles that's from the nanoparticle. I, I don't know how yet to address that. Um, but if you're going to start anew, start afresh, if you would, uh, and you want to give that a chance, give that a try to see how well, well you fare with it, then that would be my suggestion uh, to you. Anyway, just some thoughts, just some views from, from me, Dr. Walker, DanWalker.com. And if you like this content, please uh, subscribe and tell other folks about it. Just trying my best to do uh, what I think is the right thing uh, in terms of helping people stay healthy and stay well in this pandemic. Thanks for listening. Take care, Dr. Walker.